Hey guys, this video is going to be going over the Marksman artifacts. I did a whole bunch of testing and we're going to review the results and talk about what that might mean for our future usage of Marksman artifacts. Just as a quick disclaimer, this is the test server. So it's a place with more resources for CCs to test and create content. For the Marksman test, I chose to use Razark. I don't have any awakenings on him, he is max level. I don't have any skill ups on him as I wanted his base attack to be 100% AOE damage so that I could test some of the AOE artifacts as well. I used the same gear that I've used in all of the other tests which is a simple Calamity set, a broken accessory set with one crit damage accessory piece and two attack bonus of the other two main pieces. I've gone for 52% crit rate so I can test the non-crit and the crit values, nearly 100% bonus crit damage and somewhere in the region of 220% ish bonus attack. Before I open the sheet let me just show you the artifacts that were tested and the reasons for some of the testing so of course i tested the never messenger as you can see it here increases damage done to the same target uh, 10 percent per stack up to three stacks at max level and five percent per stack and three stacks at the first level also tested the soul reaper insignia which increases damage by 10 percent at max level and after killing the target it increases an additional damage of 10 percent stacking twice unleveled it's five percent instead of ten percent unleveled it's five percent base damage and 5% additional damage both instead of 10% and it still stacks up to two times so 15% versus 30% Then we have the blood bond signet. This is a 45% crit damage increase at the expense of 15% max HP at max level Versus 20% crit damage increase of 30% max HP loss at minimum level and finally from the myth tier we have the sharpshooters crest at max level it's 30% aoe damage and at minimum level it is 20% so a 10% damage gain those are the myth artifacts used i did actually test quite a lot of legendary artifacts because there are some pretty good ones so tariel's gaze which is now being renamed to idril's gaze at max level is a 25% chance to ignore 40% of the target's defense and magic resistance for three seconds Whereas at first level, it's a 15% chance to ignore 30% for the same duration. Next, we have the Shadow Gaze. It's a 20% attack increase every five attacks for five seconds. And at first level, it is a 10% attack increase for the same amount of attacks and seconds. Then we have the Broken Nightmare. Broken Nightmare is each basic attack launched increases attack by 8% for two seconds and it stacks three times. Whereas a Broken Nightmare at level 1 increases the attack by 3% again for 2 seconds and for a max of 3 stacks. Next up we have the Insignia of Perfection. If the hero hasn't received any damage within the last 6 seconds it's a 20% damage increase. At level 1 it is a 10% damage increase. The Watchguard's Disguise is 10% bonus damage to airborne units at level 1. And 15% bonus damage to airborne units at level 25. Then we have the Taunting Gaze. At 25, it is 4.5% bonus damage for every one tile away you are from the enemy. And at level 1, that is 2% damage instead of 4.5. Finally, we tested the Ancestral Teachings, which is 16% bonus attack of your total attack at the point of drop versus 8% at level 1 only. So there we go. That is all the artifacts that were tested. I used Razak because he has AoE damage. I'm just going to pull up my spreadsheet now and we can go over this. Okay, as you can see, it's a pretty big spreadsheet and there's a few things I want to clarify. So please, you're more than welcome to run off, but just give me one minute. The Broken Nightmare is in red because it, it requires that you're able to make attacks at least every two seconds in order to maintain the stacks. Unfortunately, Razark's attack speed is so low that he was unable to maintain any stacks. So Broken Nightmare is bottom ranked across all of these because it's just using base stats. He was not attacking fast enough to build any stacks. I did do some testing on the Broken Nightmare using Silas and Tario at around 1 to 1.2 attack interval and it seems incredibly good. So in the scenarios where you see Shadow Gaze doing well, which we'll go over in a second, Broken Nightmare would actually do better. So Broken Nightmare has the potential to be incredibly good but you do need to have a hero with really good attack speed. Aside from that you may note there is a big block of data missing on this table. Apologies for that, I was just running out of time and I didn't think this part was especially necessary at level 1 to redo again. We already kind of have the trend from the other things. So, what is the table? How is it tested? This is Razak using the gear I just showed you, using the artifacts we just went over. I tested him in gear raid 3, stage 18, against the Dead Eye Tyrants in the middle. The Dead Eye Tyrants are the big floating tentacle guys with like a big eye. I did stage 18, stage 19, and later I did 21 because I noticed that stage 19 was 
not much different in resistance so it felt not that useful what i wanted to show was the difference in the massive resistance increase but that resistance increase kicks in in stage 20 and 21 so i chose to test 21 and that's why i focus on the level 25 artifacts for that but i did include the myth ones and the ancestral teachings i have the rankings for 18 and 19 here and i have the rankings separately for 21 here i would assume this would also follow for 20 then I have Nightmare 3 and Nightmare 4 of the guild boss because that's obviously very important content for any DPS hero. So with that, let's talk about the first block here, which is Gear Raid 3, Stage 18 and 19. So for the purpose of this video, I'm going to focus on the level 25 bracket, otherwise it's going to be excessively long, but you're welcome to compare against the level 1 data. So Never Messenger at max stacks versus Sharpshooter's Crest. Razark is an AoE hero, so he can use both. These were dominant in Gear Raid 3, Stage 18 and 19. This is a 30% damage increase at max stacks on Never Messenger and 30% damage increase for AoE damage with Sharpshooter's Crest. So these two were dominant and were quite far ahead of the competition. Next up we had Shadow Gaze. So interestingly with Shadow Gaze, it is a 20% attack gain. So of course it's going to be Ancestral Teachings at 16%. Shadow Gaze is a 20% attack bonus. You may notice my Broken Nightmare is in redline as i said before this is because i was unable to get the stacks due to Razark's high base attack interval however at max stacks this would be 24 percent attack so it would actually beat shadow gaze and it would take the second position the four percent bonus attack may even push it into first position but i would i'd have to redo all the testing to get like for like testing so that's unfortunate but i would say broken nightmare has a lot of potential and the important thing with broken nightmare is this scales better into the end game content which we'll get into in a minute after that, we have the Bloodborne Signet. You may be wondering why a Bloodborne Signet is performing worse than Never Messenger and Sharpshooter's Crest. Bloodborne Signet at level 25 is 45% crit damage versus 30% damage. Now, if you saw my other videos, you'll know that the damage formula is attack reduced by resistance, then it is multiplied by crit damage and damage bonus. That means both crit damage and damage are applied after the enemy's resistance has already taken effect. And that means that they're interchangeable. When they come into the formula, it doesn't matter. And so they should have equal value. So you would expect Bloodborne Signet to actually perform the best. It is the highest bonus damage increment, 45%. However, the reason crit damage does not fare as well is because if you think back to how a damage formula is normally calculated, it is your attack times by your crit damage multiplier and then you reduce the resistances. That usually leads to wanting to balance the bonus attack with the crit damage because they scale off of each other, right? If you have way too much crit damage, then you're only multiplying a low value. If you have way too much attack, then you're not multiplying it by enough. So a balance in the middle is what you want typically. Because crit damage and damage are applied after resistance, it's the same relation. It means that you'll want to have a balanced crit damage and damage. Unfortunately, there aren't many ways to get bonus damage in the game, and it means that crit damage is basically less useful in most cases than damage bonus. You'll gain 50% bonus crit damage just from the base hero stats, and then most later game players who are using these kind of artifacts will have around 100 to 200% plus crit damage on top of that. So it gets way harder to use crit damage artifacts. However, there is an interesting caveat to this. Your damage multiplier is including your skills damage multiplier. So if I just pull down the sheet for one second, Razark's ultimate is a 700% up to 1000% damage multiplier. It's damage multiplier. It's done at the end. So for Razark, if he was using his ultimate and not his base attack, Bloodborne Signet would actually do pretty good because he'll have way over the top in the bonus damage, but not that much in crit damage. So there are some interesting caveats to it that are definitely worth keeping in mind. Next up, we have Tariel's Gaze or Idril's Gaze. That is a 40% of the target's defense ignore, but in this stage, there isn't that much defense to ignore, so it's performing decently, especially for a legendary, but not incredibly. Then we have Soul Reaper Insignia. At this point, a Soul Reaper Insignia is 10% damage bonus. We're not getting the other 20% from having enemies killed. Soul Reaper Insignia is not bad. It would perform the same as Never Messenger or Sharpshooter's Crest if you could maintain max stacks. However, there isn't a lot of content where you can consistently have those stacks up. So I'm not a huge fan of it personally. Then we have Ancestral Teachings because it's just a nice damage bonus. Then we have the Insignia of Perfection because at max stacks, it is granting 20% damage increase. Whereas Taunting Gaze at max stacks is 4.5. And we appear to have four tiles distance from the enemy. So we're not quite getting 20% damage bonus. Then we have the Watch Guards Disguise, which is a 15% bonus damage to airborne enemies. So again, quite a bit lower. And then Broken Nightmare finally at the bottom, but again, that's because we're unable to maintain the stacks on Razark. So, from Gear Raid 3, stage 18 to 19, what did we actually learn? 
Well, damage bonus is going to be the best here, which is why we see these two doing well, because the enemy does not have very high resistance. However, attack bonus is doing pretty good, as we can see on Shadow Gaze, and Broken Nightmare would follow suit as well if I could build the stacks. So if we quickly move on to stage 21 with a much, much higher resistance cap, we'll see different results. You'll see now that Tariel's Gaze is just absolutely dominating, and it's not even close. This is 15,000 damage on a crit versus 7.3 thousand damage on a Never Messenger or a Sharpshooter's Crest crit. These are all level 25. So you're more than doubling your damage using a Tariel's Gaze. However, Tariel's Gaze is not that easy to use, in my opinion, for certain heroes. It is a very good artifact, definitely the best for this content, but you have to be picky about who you put it on. The reason is the buff lasts for 3 seconds and it has a 25% application chance, so you definitely don't want to put this on your Azark. His ultimate takes so long to channel that you'll never get this bonus on his ultimate. So yeah, I think it's a great artifact. It's almost certainly the best in the game for the late stages of Gear A3, that being 20 and 21. However, it's best for heroes like Tariel, probably even Hatsu on the right side if you're using her, Alora, Silas maybe. Heroes that have very reliable attack intervals and you're using consistently for just their standard basic attack damage and not some kind of flashy ultimate like Maul or Razark. Then we have the Shadow Gaze. Again, this is because it's massive attack bonus helping to overcome the enemy's resistance because it's such a high resistance level at this point that getting more attack is just super important. That is 20% attack. But Broken Nightmare would be 24% attack. So this would do better than Shadow Gaze and would probably be around 12k, I'm, I'm guessing. So Broken Nightmare would actually be very viable as well. But you would need a really good attack speed for this to actually work. From my testing on other heroes, around one second attack interval seemed to work. So third place, we have Ancestral Teaching. So this artifact coming back again with a Vengeance. Even though this is level 25 compared against some big artifacts, it is beating the Never Messenger and the Sharpshooter's Crest. Because again, it's just bonus attack and this is such high resistance enemies that you do need the bonus attack. After that, we do get the Never Messenger and Sharpshooter's Crest. Uh, they're not miles behind and they are more reliable overall, but I mean, Ancestral Teachings is so cheap, right? It's so easy to get to this point. So then after that, we have the Bloodborne Signet falling even further behind. Then we have the Soul Reaper Insignia again, though, at zero stacks. The Insignia of Perfection, Taunting Gaze, and Watch Guards Disguise. So pretty clearly you can see that having the Resistance Penetration is incredibly good. And then after that, it would be the Attack Bonus Artifacts all just in a line. So yeah, that's that's the main thing we can take away from that. If you're doing the later stages of Gear Raid 3, Chariot's Gaze is just phenomenally useful. It's just absolutely, hands down, incredibly good to use. Definitely the best to use on your fast attackers that you rely on to deal damage, ideally in the middle as well. Then Shadow Gaze is actually pretty good if you can get the attack interval for it. And same with Broken Nightmare. Although my testing doesn't show that, definitely Broken Nightmare is very good. And Ancestral Teachings is a much cheaper, affordable option as well. So finally, let's move on to discussing the Guild Boss. We'll just focus on the Guild Boss Nightmare 4 because the results are the same. The resistances between the two are not that different. And we'll focus on level 25 as well. So again, because the resistance is lower on the boss, you can see that we have a win for Never Messenger and Sharpshooter's Crest. The bonus damage is just better than anything else at this moment because the resistance is not that high. However, Tario's Gaze is second place behind the joint Never Messenger Sharpshooter's Crest because I guess the resistance is high enough that it puts it kind of just behind it. So that's an interesting one. Though, of course, Tario's Gaze is much harder to maintain the uptime because it's a proc, only 25% chance, I believe, to proc. Then we have the Shadow Gaze, which again would be the Broken Nightmare if, if I was able to maintain the stacks. So these are pretty good consistently. If you look throughout the chart, Shadow Gaze is second, second, third. Broken Nightmare would actually follow suit with that. It would be directly in line. It would it would be second, second, third, perhaps taking second spot even from Tariel's Gaze in Nightmare 4. So from my testing, an artifact that people have previously said is very bad, Broken Nightmare, I think is actually potentially very good if you can maintain the stacks. Next, we have Bloodborne Signet, again falling behind for the same reasons as before, crit damage versus damage. And then we have Ancestral Teachings doing a pretty good job. Soul Reaper Insignia, again at zero stacks, obviously not a guild boss item because you cannot build stacks here. Then we have the ta Taunting Gaze, which you would think would perform a bit better considering you've got so many tiles to build up the damage bonuses and it does finally outperform these two artifacts insignia of perfection and watch guards the skies but yeah it wasn't enough for taunting gaze to go much further than that anyway that's all the data i collected and just to summarize the results the best artifacts in the game are going to be never messenger sharpshooter's crest and then these three pretty much 
Tarios Gaze, Shadow Gaze, and Broken Nightmare. I would definitely experiment with Broken Nightmare if you can maintain the stacks. It's super easy to drop the stacks though, so you'll have to pay close attention to whether that works out for you or not. The good thing about the Legendary Artifacts is they are still cheaper than the Myth ones to upgrade and way easier to come by. So I am actually already using these. Tarios Gaze especially is incredibly good. As you can see, it's first in the end game of Gear Raid 3 and it's second in Guild Boss. So I do quite like it. One thing to keep in mind that I haven't mentioned in other videos that I think is very important to mention, and this will heavily affect these three artifacts, Ancestral Teachings as well. These are all effectively being used as defense breaks. That's the result that they're giving you. They are either directly breaking defense like Tario's Gaze, or in the case of the other three, they're granting you attack to help you overcome the enemy's massive resistance, right? So they're effectively defense breaks. Dolores is the best defense breaker in the game. That's basically what she's doing. That's why she's so ridiculous. She's granting you something like six, seven thousand plus attack. And that attack is just directly crushing the enemy's defense resistance. Any excess is going along with your actual attack into crit damage and damage bonus. So the reason that's important is in isolation, it looks like these are so good. However, when you include a Dolores ult, now you've tipped the scale too high into attack and not high enough into crit damage and damage. So when Dolores ults, it pushes your attack up by so much that crit damage and damage become very valuable. So these artifacts scaling on damage are incredibly good during a Dolores ult. They're going to be way better. So although Tario's Gaze may be second right now, the gap between these two would be way bigger were Dolores ulting. And you're going to be ulting with Dolores quite a lot in your guild boss runs and in some important content as well. In the guild boss, it's easy to have a Dolores ult on everyone. However, in Nightmare 3, that is not so easy. There's much less positions to use a Dolores to cover more heroes. You'll have someone on the right and the four platforms in the middle and the five tiles in the middle cannot all be covered by one Dolores. So I think this still holds a lot of water. Obviously, Tarot's Gaze is still absolutely crushing it, and I would definitely use this over these, regardless of Dolores or not, for Gear Raid 3 2021. But for Guild Boss, I would keep in mind that your Dolores is going to really change the damage results. So definitely do some of your own testing. And my damage calculator has been updated. I have not included Gear Raid 3 yet, but I will include that next. It does include Gear Raid 1 currently. Anyway, I think that's everything I want to cover in this video. It's just to give you the data to help you make your own deductions, and I hope it helps you with your results in the game. Anyway, thank you guys very much for watching. Have a great day. Take care, and bye-bye.